of Tyler Cheek with us. <laughs> I can get Thank you guys you. off that tangent. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thanks um, for having me. Sure. I appreciate it. How long have you been DJing? I started when I was, when I was uh, about 26, I would say. It's been a few years. I'm 31 now. I don't know if you knew that. No? Um, so, yeah, not too long, but enough to kind of form my own style and, and taste and stuff. And so you started with uh, computers or I definitely started CDJs? On, on the controller, uh, that era. You know, I started off with a Pioneer mixer. Um, it's real simple, and I'm actually still using it. It's, it's pretty broken, but it kind of works. Nice. Works enough. Yeah. <laughs> That's all that matters. I yeah. traveled so much with it that it just got torn apart. Like, the buttons are all, like, at, an, at a 45-degree angle oh, yeah, and when you're turning them. Yeah. <laughs> so no one can really use it but you. Oh, it's, it's probably part. pretty accurate, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Last time I, I played at Hey Mambo, uh, I actually had a toothpick for one of the jog wheels because... It's broken. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> so, whatever you got to do. That's right. That's awesome. <laughs> so you travel a lot to play music or? Just, just travel a lot to travel a lot. That's cool. And just always Especially have it handy the, yeah. just in case. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Always go to see friends or something. So we would likely cool. have people over and yeah. have a good time. Yeah. That's cool. So you said you've definitely been playing long enough to develop a style. How would you describe your style or your uh, sound? Very minimal. Um, darker i would say yeah but i like a lot of minimal techno and um i like a lot of instrumentation aspect of it so guys like um nicholas jar and uh, dj cozy and people like that that bring a real Hell instrumental yeah. approach to it nice yeah i definitely dig both those names a lot and um uh, maybe like um i don't know Matthew Deere, something like that. You know, real musicians that, that uh, right. bring their definite own style to the mix. So. Now, Matthew Deere has several projects, right? <coughs> he yeah. does Audion, too. That's the only one that I know of. But uh, I think there's another one. I, I, I I'm, won't, I'm I won't come does. up with the name, yeah. though. I'm positive <laughs> he does. <coughs> I feel like yeah. Matthew Deere was the kind of the one where he started to develop his own personal sound, uh, where that one took off pretty well. Yeah. And the vocal treatments that he does are amazing. He's he's qu a very interesting person. Like there's a lot. There's some some uh, little mini documentaries. I don't know if who did it. If it was like a thump, like a vice deal or whatever. But mm -hmm. there's some little short on him about uh, where he goes to his hometown and kind of revisits. It may have been. I think something I saw that. Hangs out with his dad and his dad's a guitar player and he's a guitar player and it just shows his real musical background to the whole approach. So it's cool. It is really cool. Do you have an instrumentational approach? Do you play? Um, I I play in a little, a little BS band, um, that I kind of bring my own style over to, and fuse it with theirs. You know, so I'll bring my, my um, production studio basically with me, and keyboards and uh, synth pads and all kinds of stuff, and we all play together. So it's cool. That's really cool. You guys do shows out or no, just kind of yeah, just hanging out? With, just hanging collaborating together, with each yeah. other and, and making a hobby out of it. But That's really cool, can though. definitely put out some good stuff, though. So you do record? Um, yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the time, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I learned early just to record everything. It's, you, there's nothing that can go wrong. Absolutely. Right. Now that we don't but have to worry about buying tape. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty infinite. Mm -hmm. Or when you perform, um, the name you perform under, is it Pleasure Trap? Mm -hmm. Nice. Where did that come from? It was actually this <clears throat> book that I was reading, a doctor um, explaining kind of a psychological process that people have kind of innately, and it stuck with me. It's kind of how people but will look to seek pleasure and avoid pain and do it while expending the least amount of ener energy. It's kind of a, what they call the Pleasure Trap. Just uh, running off the uh, reward systems in yep, your brain, and yep. yeah. So, um, I just thought it was cool. I thought it applied <coughs> to pretty much everything that everybody does. Uh. And, um, with you know things that make you happy, like music, for instance, and uh, food, and drugs, and stuff like yep. that. What book? The pleasure. Uh, the pleasure trap. That's what that, it's called. Oh, it's yeah. actually called the pleasure trap. Nice. Well, sweet. I might. I might look that one up. Yeah. It's mostly just about. Um, Health stuff, actually. Like health a, stuff? Yep. Like, if you actually read a book, it's just uh, simply like a guy's, uh, almost a dietitian book, but 
he explains that process in it, and that's where it came from. That's interesting. interesting. Yeah, it's it's amazing what kind of bad habits you'll get into just working off the reward systems in your brain, and you know the kind of patterns you create. They're not all bad <laughs> habits. Like. No, not all of them. <laughs> no. But no, but I'm saying, but you can get a lot of bad habits, even with something that's not necessarily a bad thing. You can create this weird kind of bad patterns because yeah. of the reward system that you know well that's true the your reason bra- you're seeking if it if your brain thinks it's rewarding itself then it's going to want that yep thing for sure that's an interesting theory or <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was processing it still <laughs> uh, I, I would really like to see how he flits the, fits the pleasure trap into a kind of a dietitian's book well that point he's arguing there or, or pointing out is that all of the artificial foods we've created mm-hmm. uh, trick, oh, trick our brain into thinking you're getting this rewarding uh, high calorie food or that's not empty calories basically yeah. and so uh, basically our food is tricking us into like reading this really sugary you know just ultimate reward food it's you know just like having sex or doing drugs like that's what he's equating it to uh, or that it can be anyway And I think, too, isn't it um, a lot of, like, the high sugars and stuff like that actually hit the the reward system a little differently? Mm -hmm. And it can be more, I I guess, like, more quickly, you know, rewarding than than actually eating right and doing stuff. It's definitely not actually as rewarding, though. It's just a big... Right. They say that it's basically hijacking the circuits in your brain to make you think that you're getting something you're not. So that's where it comes from. Right on. I See, I had a totally brain. different theory at work well, today. It's funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine because oh, yeah. <laughs> of all the people that follow me on SoundCloud, there's probably a good 50 to 100 of them that just saw that last word in my name. They're like, oh, shit. Or, or they, oh, they'll yeah. follow me because they think it's trap music. I, didn't even, oh, I right. didn't even think about that part. <laughs> and that's, that's a little, uh, that's hard to deal with, actually. Yeah. I'm sure, yeah. Because yeah. it's definitely, that's as far away as from my style as it could mm-hmm. possibly be. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but if you can lure them in and then show I them I mean, it's all about some, the numbers, right? Yeah, so show them some good music and, you know, kind of a trick. It's see, kind of a see, reward I system have, pattern itself. But I was unsure if I'd even say this tonight, but th- because your name was Tyler Cheek, I had, like, this ass thing going with it. <laughs> and, I, like, you know, like... Once I clinch, you can't get out type of idea. <laughs> oh, my God. That no. was his definition of the pleasure yeah, trap. Yeah, I had bro. no idea. What the, well, we're just bullshitting can, at work. I can totally you know? see that. Yeah. It works, with, though. With Tyler Cheek, though, I would have been thinking more of tongue in cheek. Ooh. Well, what we were thinking, if you had a weekly or whatever you should call it. Yeah, if you had, like, a, a residency a somewhere, resi- <laughs> your slogan should probably be, like, once I clinch, you can't get out. <laughs> oh, like, my God. <laughs> I would attract a pretty specific crowd of people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Probably, yeah. yeah. You remember that gig bachelor? Really want those They'd probably be dedicated. Uh, you know, they'll probably always be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You remember that that uh, gig Badger was talking about? Yeah, If yeah. it's still around, that sex club, you might be able to get residency there with that. I don't think you would want that. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Uh, uh, yeah. No publicity so, is bad publicity. That is true. Uh, well. Kidding. I yeah, was <laughs> I don't know. Tell that to Miley Cyrus. <laughs> she still makes more than I do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Did Jesus. So, so are you... <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we are rusty. I know. So are you from Tulsa originally? I was born in Oklahoma City. Okay. But I moved here when I was 10, so I pretty much consider myself from Tulsa for sure. Yeah. I love it. Compared to Oklahoma City, too, it's definitely got the, the edge on it. Oklahoma City. Yeah, I think so. Much prettier, much greener. Mm-hmm. And it's just more about, to me, it's more about um, community, art, and yeah. like, you know, locally owned stuff where I feel Oklahoma City is just so commercial. You know, everything they do is a chain. It's or definitely a different feel. Yeah. When I was in college, this girl <laughs> came up to me. She was from Oklahoma City. And she was talking not to me directly, but kind of like at me to her friends. And was like, you ever notice how people from Tulsa never say they're from Oklahoma? 
they always say they're from Tulsa. Oh, yeah. And so I had to bust in and be like, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason. <laughs> the, it's, it's better. Have you been here? Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, it's a nice little community here. Well, every time I travel, too, when people ask me where I'm from, you know, even if I'm from Chicago, L.A., you know, Vegas or somewhere like that, and people ask me where I'm from, I always say Tulsa. I do, too. Just to see if they go, oh, cool, or they go, where's that? Exactly. Well, that's probably the problem. Like, if you say Oklahoma City, it's pretty no-brainer. But if yeah. you say Tulsa, people don't necessarily know where that is, but... But nine sure, times out of sure ten, now, yeah. most of the nine time times I out get, of ten, they're like, "Oh, okay, I know what that is." Yeah, yeah but I normally get like, "Oh, I love Tulsa." Yeah. The only time I don't really get like, "Oh, I know about Tulsa at all," is like if I'm out of the country, and then you have to right. be like, oh, "Okay, so it's in the same state where like the Flaming Lips are from." You know where, <laughs> the, you know where the tornadoes happen? Yeah, yeah right. The thunder. <laughs> we're like an hour and a half away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's better. I swear. <laughs> I like how every question we ask you, we derail on something now. <laughs> good. That's how this is going to go. Oh, man. Well, we need the practice again. Right? So what got you into playing music in the first place? Um, thinking that I had better taste than everybody else, I guess. Oh, oh really? You know, hearing, hearing people play and yeah. just knowing that you could improve, I guess. Uh, actually, doing something about it. So I, I, I started it anyway. I'd I like definitely that. venture yeah. to say probably every musician or DJ got their start with some slight form of narcissism. Oh yeah. It's, it's healthy Mm -hmm. to a degree. Well, you have to have a certain amount of, I don't know if it's narcissism or of some kind of weird self-confidence to go, I can pick up this instrument and do something with it. Any instrument, because it's very fucking tough. And in order to get through just learning the instrument and doing the painstaking years of just learning it, developing it, channelizing yourself or, you know, whatever, it, it takes a lot to get through it. I think it is kind of a, I can do this. I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do this, you know. So well, yeah, I can definitely have, see your if point. If you don't have confidence in yourself, you, know, <coughs> you probably won't make it too far. So. Right. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people. Best, best to believe in yourself. Right. Well, even, if you, even if you're tricking your brain, we're back to that. Right, yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> False it's all confidence. about tricking your brain. Well, I know a lot of people that were like, yeah, I tried to play this instrument. You know, it's tough for a little bit, and they just go, eh, I didn't care that much. <laughs> yeah. So do you play out often? Hardly at all. Really? Yeah. Why is um, that? I don't know. I, like I said, I've been traveling for the past couple of years. Um, I'm, when I moved to Kansas City, um, that's kind of when I started uh, DJing and doing my own stuff. And I moved back in 2012 and um, played a few times that year, I think. And then I started traveling and just uh, didn't work out. Um, but also, though, I mean, I'm not just going to play every everything that right. is going on if it's not if I don't like what I think it's going to be, then I'm pretty picky about it. Right. Can I knew I was going to be traveling and, and possibly moving, so I didn't <laughs> feel the need to establish something here. You know, if I got to play out and f- with some friends, it was great. If not, you know, I can always share stuff online, which is always a good avenue. And yeah. And just play for friends at the house or yeah, wherever. Yeah, house party. Yeah. That w- that's my preference anyway. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. But um, Have you played out in Tulsa? Yeah, I played at yeah. 209 and Hey Mambo, and uh, okay. I think those are the only actual two spots, but uh, maybe a couple times each or something. It's not too many guys. Yeah, I guess 209's gone. It's the Tiki Saturn yeah, room. Yeah, Saturn room, Saturn room yeah. I don't think they're going to I don't know why DJs. they have two different <laughs> names they're trying to get people to recognize. It's really confusing. I, I think well, I think it's yeah. really, it's called the Saturn Room, but everyone just calls it like the that Tiki, tiki Bar or Tiki Lounge because it, it's that theme. Yeah. Well, and it's funny too. I would drop the Tiki Lounge, even though you got some Tiki stuff going on. Yeah. I would, I would drop that name. Mm-hmm. Well, it was funny too, because that was uh, the reason they called off the whole 209 gig. Is that one time, I think it was what Jitsu walked in there. They were doing some weird thing. He was, I can see if I can get the story right. And he was supposed to set up and play that night. Mm. And they just kept doing some weird, I don't know, they had a group there. And he was kind of going, well, what the fuck? Finally, the owner came up and he was like, oh, yeah, we're done. We're, we're not doing the show anymore. Mm, that's shady. And he was like, yeah, we're going to turn this into a tiki tiki lounge. And that was, what, year over a year ago they stopped doing shows? At, at doing least, yeah. Yeah. It took them this long to make the transition. but mm-hmm. It was honestly probably two years ago. Yeah, it's ah, been a while. I was going to say, I don't remember it. Too. <clears throat> it's been a while. I mean, it's a fun little place, but it's so niche mm-hmm. You know, I don't, I don't see myself wanting to hang out there all the time. Well, that corner is a problem. Like, they have a big eye sore parking sore on the corner there. That's just nothing. Right. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, right. it doesn't give any visibility to that place. And uh, 
I don't know. Until that happens, or until that, cha- until that changes, it'll probably be the same. I'd almost think about like taking that back area and just trying to push it out a little bit, build some fences and whatnot, and try to push it out, you know, closer make to the, the road, and bigger. just make this huge patio. Yeah. Where you mm-hmm. could do shows and stuff out there. That'd be really cool, but wouldn't fit. Every time I've been there, I feel like I'm in a cartoon. <laughs> God, just, it, yeah, it's the, like, any bar's been or just the no, just since since, since now. I, I always feel like it's a I'm in a cartoon now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is real, and because uh, it's just that it's niche. Just, that's yeah, it's just really strange. Yeah, uh, we got hula skirts on the the awnings and the blow the blowfish <laughs> hanging from the ceiling. Right, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I've only been there once, but I don't. You don't remember the drinks it. made out of all these weird <laughs> cups. I and collected all the information I needed to when I was there. <laughs> it was late. <laughs> well, the yeah, first time I went there, I, I went and uh, I got a drink. And I went and stood in the corner by myself and just kind of observed. And cried. <laughs> <laughs> that pretty much Should describes have. my every, every bar trip there. Right, right, right yeah. yeah. Ever. Just <laughs> observed <laughs> silently, yeah. Yeah, I just kind of stood in the darkest corner and watched everybody for a long time. I was like, all right, I think I get it. I'm going to go somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it definitely had a friendlier vibe, I think, when it was the old place, the old 209. I mean, at least it was kind of the low lit paintings on the wall and stuff like that yeah. and like the, where the the DJ area was, there was all those couches and it was just kind of comfortable. It felt like a house show a lot of the times. Yeah, it did. We should move mm-hmm. this box more centrally. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think so. <laughs> the box of beer. The coarse oh. khaki. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I call it. Yeah, she, she's got names for everything. It's coarse khaki. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, what software did you learn on, and are you still using that? To DJ with? Yeah. Um, I started using. Uh, Serato, pretty much, basically off the right off the bat. Right off the bat, um, still sticking to it. Yeah, even though I'm not a, I'm not definitely, I'm definitely not partial to it. Uh, I think it has a lot of flaws, but it works fine. Um, I'm actually uh, planning on getting the uh, Scratch pretty soon, the Native Instruments version, just because it'll play into my uh, production stuff, and I can link them up and oh, nice. play on top of what I'm what I'm playing through the DJing software. So. That's really cool. It'll help me out. It's something that I do all the time anyway. <laughs> at home, I can you know play on top of, but it's not technically linked into it, so I can't. Um, I don't know. Just it'll be a lot smoother. Yeah. Uh, so are you looking to do more of uh, more live performances mm-hmm. mixed in? Yeah, definitely. Kind of like a Rodriguez Jr. type of. Um, somewhat. Yeah. What do you play uh, when you play on top of things? Just keyboards. Keyboards. Yeah. Right on. And then all the uh, the synth pads that I have on my um, little what production uh, dial? I use Native Instruments Machine, the Machine nice. Two. Nice. It's just a big, you know, that has sixteen pads and lots of creativity options and stuff. So yeah, it's fun. I remember messing with Machine when it first came out? It was really cool. It's cool now with their with their linking. You know, what you're able to add to that with uh, with what Native Instruments <laughs> makes, and it's gonna help people get really creative, I think. So. Nice. Yes. They're going to have their cross-platform Apple motif. With probably. It'll probably be ridiculously expensive. <laughs> and right, really yeah. Over-marketed to people you don't really feel like you relate to and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. But They're looking for the buck. Oh, yeah. Uh, I definitely see that, you know, you know, you know, developing in this technological age, we've, kind of did stem this whole other kind of branch of electronic artists of you know still doing like the dj sets but adding more like live production and performance well, on to. it yeah I, mean, I, I don't think that there'll be a way to avoid that going forward because you know there are just so many people playing the same songs how are you going to separate yourself so. yeah it's just it's a definitely natural evolution but it's really cool to mm-hmm. see kind of cool to see what people are doing already yeah. and then try to, you know, think about what's going to happen here, even in the next year, what we're going to start seeing and yeah. how the dolls and everything, you know, uh, the controllers and everything are going to change. And yeah, I really play with any of the new pioneer stuff that's been put out with like the <clears throat> supposedly the stuff, you know, built into it all in one type stuff, but yeah. it seems like they're really trying to advance what they're doing too. So it will be cool to see. 
Man, they got to really watch what other people are figuring out and try to figure out how to make it easier right. or better for them yeah. to kind of keep jumping on that bandwagon. So everything's moving so fast. And you just have to keep coming up with bigger and better things and try to be the first one to do anything. Well, kind of, but then I'd also say a lot of it's down on the marketing <laughs> side of it, too, and who you're trying to tap into. Like, I was reading, right. I saw a thing yesterday on the internet of uh, this company had a $1 million reward for whoever could figure out a way to explain to people why this $2,750 audio cable is better than normal audio cables. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give you a million dollars if you can figure out how we should oh, <laughs> sell wow. this. I thought you were about to say something about the, the Gates Foundation giving a million bucks to somebody who could like revolutionize the condom. Have you guys seen that? No, I haven't no. seen that. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's I think a thing? It's, it's already happened. I think they've already given the, the award away to somebody. What did um, they figure out? I don't know. I just saw a picture of it. It looks like very uh, weird. But <laughs> harder, harder to use than a normal one. <laughs> uh, it's supposed to be easier. That's the point. Like That's he's the rewarding thing, yeah. the. It's like the uh, remaking the ketchup of, packets, but yeah. are we really going to go for the dip and squeeze <laughs> okay. kind, or yeah. are we just going to stick to the normal tear it and no, make th- a mess? I think dip and squeeze are dangerous. <laughs> I think condoms should be more like Back to the Future 2 shoes. You're going to sl- slip that's them on and push a button, and the guy's going to shoop. Almost. That sounds dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Just put it on. Boom, boom. Right. There you go. Perfect fit. The, <laughs> what if the pressure sensitivity is all right. wrong? Yeah. And you get a haywire one, it just keeps going. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can't cut off blood flow. <laughs> like, right. I haven't seen this. I'll have to look it up, though. That sounds interesting. Yeah, I'll have to look up the actual picture. I thought you'd like that, Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Good old Bill Gates. Right. Trying, Bill, to, trying get, to stop people from over, get, overpopulating. So mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, really. Uh, it's not the first guy that I would think to be looking to put money into that, per se. Yeah, I don't think he's trying to obviously make any any income off of it. He just wants to get into third world world countries, I think, mainly make it more accessible and I watched the video one time of these people like responding to uh, being shown how to use a condom it was like some th- <laughs> third world country in like the 70s or something and they could, they, there's a picture of all these Asian people and uh, they're like Southeast Asian people and the look on their faces they're like you know they had never never heard of birth control at all wow. like, what is this thing? It's just a funny picture. It's hard to. <laughs> I'm okay that with this. Yeah. What are you you want to stick that, that where? What? <laughs> I get that you're showing me with your foot, but <laughs> <laughs> on what? Yeah, it's just like a cucumber and a condom. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, see this. You're like, why would we not want to reproduce? We only know how to reproduce. <laughs> right. What's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> So you started DJing with like <laughs> <laughs> with more of like these minimal styles. Is that like what, I actually what? started DJing with like trance style stuff, which okay. is what I was into at the time. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. But I kind of quickly discovered other other things and and went away from there. But um, that's where I actually started DJing was a lot what, of tra- well. What got stuff. you into the trance type stuff? What were you into before you got there? Before the um, before I started listening to trance music, uh, yeah. Um, what was your musical progression? Definitely electronic music, um, you know, like Daft Punk or um, early synth pop. Like uh, everybody's usual common denominator is always Depeche Mode, which is a huge one for right. me. But um, stuff like that, uh, Aphex Twin or um, you know, Radiohead was a big one, probably too. Uh, the Knife. I don't know if you guys know the Knife. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. There's lots of things. Lots of things kind of slowly you morphed your way into it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh. Pretty simple. Yeah. <laughs> it's that easy. Enough <laughs> said, yeah. <laughs> so you started with trance, and then where did you go from there? Um, kind of in the, more of the deep house, which I, I even hate to say that word anymore, but. Yeah. Uh, it's gotten to be a really flashy word. Yeah. yeah. I, I, don't, I could care less what, what genre labels slapped anything, but. Right. Um, more of that stuff, kind of darker, even progressive stuff at first, but uh, then deep house and techno and minimal and stuff, and just uh, 
I started going to clubs like in Chicago and San Francisco and just hearing what was not in the Midwest, which was a yeah, uh, not a shock or anything. It was just like, geez, we're missing out so much on yeah. what's actually relevant around the world and not in the Midwest. Yeah, our musical focus here is is really different. We're I feel off. like I'm like in Bud Light <laughs> USA town with, yeah. with the music here. It's just it's a lot of the DJs that play that style of music around here could not go you know, to too many other places yeah. and get away with it, yeah. you know. But, I don't know, maybe Kansas and Missouri, but... Mm-hmm. Try it's still there, there yeah. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I think we're going to get back to, to house and, you know, house-based styles again. Hopefully. But but I think probably by the time we get to it here, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's going to mm-hmm. be another badass shit happening everywhere else, like... Well, I don't think everything no. else is necessarily evolving. I think we're just I, yeah, that's true. Well, that it, true. think of all the fats we've gone through, and it's always been house in the UK or everywhere else. You know, yeah. it's been a pretty like standard staple. Yeah, you know, it's kind of changed, you know, progressed in different ways over the years, but it's always kind of stayed house, been house based. Whatever. Did you just say whatever? <laughs> I I didn't oh. say whatever. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you're the only one that just said that. <laughs> whatever whatever <laughs> I <was> like, <laughs> probably she's gonna lose it mind. she's yeah. totally gonna I'm lose it I'm not gonna it. lose it <laughs> <laughs> I'm not there yet oh uh, man <clears throat> so working with Melody has been really nice I figured out if we work her really really hard she <laughs> gets into this delirious state where she laughs for five minutes <laughs> over <laughs> probably the worst joke it's probably not even a joke <laughs> it could be anything <laughs> <laughs> see we're on the edge of it nice. <laughs> we're on the edge uh, all right so <laughs> going back to the, the places you played you just said pretty much like hey mambo in 209 mm-hmm. okay yeah. that was it i think i was gonna see what you thought about other places around here but i guess you haven't ever played them um but, <laughs> but as just venues to go hear music what do you think the places around here you know, it's it's changed so much since I moved back. Um, like, I haven't been able to check out anything at the first shop yet, which seems like a cool new place to have stuff going on. Yeah, and I for think sure. that, you know, around uh, Yeti and Sound Pony, that little area back there, they've got some cool stuff going on. But I haven't gotten out as much as I need to make a, a real judgment on the state of music yeah. in town. But um, <laughs> it all really comes down to to me and being in a place central like this, you know, located like this is a uh, sound system. Yeah. You know, the Yeti has a decent one um, and they keep building onto it. It's another reason why I love them. Yeah. Uh, sound Pony is a fun place to play, but they've got a really bad one or you have to lug your own. Right. You know, the first shop's got a decent one. Um, but in a lot of venues around here, it really just kind of, a lot of it comes down to sound system. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. I don't want to, you know, especially a lot of the, the depths of even like some of the stuff you're talking about. There's so much depth to it. If you don't have, you know, a system that has the range enough to get all those frequencies yeah. out there, it's just going to sound flat. You know, yeah, once I went to <coughs> Spy Bar in particular in Chicago, it was just a whole different world. I mean, yeah. the, the, set, the setup they have there is incredible and it makes you appreciate music in a, in a different light. Yeah. It's crazy what difference it can make. Now you talk about traveling all the time and this is just not business is pleasure. Yeah. Uh, just like I said, kind of traveling around and seeing friends. I I, uh, I worked for the same company for about twelve years and did the typical not enough vacationing, working too hard all the time. And yeah. once I left there, I kind of just said that I need to maybe not take things so seriously and and just get out and experience different things. So yeah. I had a good opportunity to do it and uh, travel for a good year and a half or two years, and still kind of doing that. Actually, I'll probably head out here pretty soon. Nice. Check something else out. That's, what, that's cool. What are some of the your favorite places to go then? San Francisco for sure. <coughs> yeah. Um, and Chicago. Those those are the two main ones. Um, I haven't been able to get up in the Northeast at all yet, but I definitely want to. I think I'll enjoy it. But um, San Francisco for sure. Northern California period. Yeah. yeah. Cool there. Um. Um. You spent um, some time in the Northeast. Um, I haven't spent really any time in the Northeast. Me? Yeah. Uh, more anything north of like North Carolina, but I've been to Maine, but I just skipped <laughs> over everything else cool in between. Right? <laughs> there's so much. Yeah, there's so much to see. 
too. Okay, thanks. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> like, do you want my clips notes on that? Well, I was, <laughs> that no, I was, was just kind of opening up to like that you know open a, conversation. You're like, no, that's that's it. I was, can you list your references? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> what uh, what places do you like to to go for music in San Francisco? Um, it doesn't really matter. They're, they all have such a good sound system and you're in such a big blend of people always. It's, it's just, that's what a big city has to offer. It's always different and they're always, um, of exceptional quality. So it makes really no difference. I mean, if you're really into the music, it shouldn't matter what else is going on, right. what people are dressed like or how much it is to get in or right. how cool a place it is. But as long as the sound system's good, like public works is one of the ones I've frequented, but, yeah. um, I'm actually trying to go back to see Matthew Deere in early June there, which I hope to make. Right on. That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to head that way in August. Really? So I just, I haven't actually been to San Fran, so. It's a cool place. Yeah, I've been around there, but not there. So hopefully, hopefully we'll find the good gigs. They're uh, easy to find. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot easier to find when you're out there. (coughs) You get nothing when you're here. (laughs) <laughs> essentially there's, there's probably like three places in the country I would say that are just consistently the, the best and uh, Verbo- Ver- Verboden in New York City and Spy Bar in Chicago and then probably Public Works in San Francisco those are always so consistent with good acts or at least the people that I am so crazy about yeah I could see that Drink time. Right. <laughs> oh, I forgot to drink. <laughs> like how we all take a drink pause. I know. I had a thing I was going to ask you. I, I just, it did that. <laughs> <laughs> you forgot? Yeah, I, I think you made me forget. Good job. Probably. Yeah, you said hump. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So, when you are going out on your trips, you're pretty much just playing house parties with your buddies? Um, have you played out anywhere? I don't think that I have, uh, like in a, in a club environment or a bar anywhere else in other cities or anything. Just no? just house parties and... Are you looking to locally. do that in the future? I'm, I'm wanting to kind of forward my own projects first before I'm... I don't know. I, I've spent so much time working on production stuff in the past couple of years that... Uh, I'm so intent on getting it fully developed and and building up a library of my own that um, that's really all that's important to me right now. Are you looking for um, doing entire sets of purely your Absolutely. own? Absolutely, yeah. Right on. Yeah, I think that's a smart way to go. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, don't, I mean, if you put out the quality stuff, there there shouldn't be any holding you back. So, right. It's one one fast track way to to being prevalent is good good production stuff so this is true how do you go about looking for your music do you have certain sites or i use um i usually buy everything from beatport um not that i'm partial to them but actually i've i've started using spotify as a really good tool for for electronic music That's because they I almost mean. they put out almost everything instantly and Mm-hmm. Eight or nine out of ten songs that I go to buy on Beatport are all um, released at the same time on Spotify. So instead of listening to a ninety-second segment that might make a track sound actually better than it really is, you can right. go and preview fully everything, you know, and save yourself some waste of money. Honestly, you know, I can't count how many times I've bought fifty bucks worth of music, and you know, several of the songs weren't as advertised. Right. In a in a small little clip that makes it sound, you know, really awesome. So. But you've got these like really cool parts that are like bridged together by some mm-hmm. real crap and you're like, why would you do that? Yep. And then you have to go <laughs> in and edit and like make your own track out of it or whatever. I've um, done that so, so many times. But yeah, I usually buy everything from Beatport. Um but you scout with Spotify. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good tool to use. That's true. Yeah, I've kinda of built my Spotify account too so that I can just go to the discover section. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or like I've like, I've followed, you know, made a point to follow that, uh, that just too. like I do on Beatport and, you know, as, as soon as the things release it notifies you, so. Yeah. It's a good way to 
know what's out without actually having to to log into Beatport and you know be that uh, on top of it with them. So, and we've talked about you and me getting the Spotify account there. I mean that algorithm. I mean, like you said, you worked on it for like what two years to get it to oh, where you I've, have it now. I've been working on it for a long time now, yeah. but it's been solid for probably two years. Yeah, you know, it's, it it doesn't give me shit. It gives me what I want. Yeah, whether it's older shit or, and you get the emails like every day. Like, right, this is out now. This is out now. This is out now. Are we even just talking about like with your radio and Discover too? I mean, just the way you've liked and disliked things that kind of kept perfecting the algorithm and different things. Oh uh, yeah, I think uh, just kind of casually, I listen when I go on walks. Which yeah. I go on a lot of walks, and I'll start every track that I like, and so I'm around six thousand starred tracks. So it's got a good idea yeah. of what I like. Yeah. Um, but I mean, you must have to do that because my Spotify thing just gives me shit. I mean, I listen to shit, but I mean. I haven't actually Which checked out the, the radio yeah. too much on there. You do. I don't, I don't do the radio, um, but the Discover section is really nice. It's just like, it'll always say, like, you listen to this group. You might also like this. Uh, right. And they're generally right. <laughs> I heard Turk talking about B-Port, you know, with a similar deal. Um, but it's, it's handy because it does notice, you know, different uh, or common uh, labels that are releasing stuff and it'll mm-hmm. throw some out there that you might necessarily not have missed or not have uh, seen come out so it's cool you know one that I never really dove into but I think would probably be worthwhile is uh, Resident Advisor they're good normally I use them hmm. for research on people that I can't yeah, find for sure out information on but I haven't like sat down with it and really been like I like this and this and this and this and this and gone through a list I haven't either actually Probably should. Yeah, I feel I like use, I use them a lot when I'm traveling, especially because they're on top of if I'm going to oh, they know whatever they know who's going on. There's anybody of note anyway should be on on their website. Hmm. Bigger shows and stuff. Yeah, I know a lot of people who use it, but as far as following artists mm-hmm. and all that, I mean, they have the information. They they should have a decent algorithm yeah. to to support you discovering new things. And have we heard any more about Tidal? Because that made a big splash when it did its whole <laughs> release. What's that? Ba-dum. Tidal. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Tight hole? Tidal. That's what I'm Tight hearing. hole. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Tight hole. Have we heard Tidal. anything else about the tight hole? Yeah. <laughs> I heard it loosened up. <laughs> now, I, I really think that. Uh, and who's buying I don't think that people want that. I don't think people care so much about bitrate unless you really are just like a producer well the problem you want to i know people where they will only listen to um lossless files because right. they don't want to like taint their ears with bit rates and things you know uh well, well but the thing with what they're doing you know and, and having their it's pretty much a site where you pay like 20 bucks a month and you're getting like higher quality who's behind it i always forget i don't remember oh uh, who's the big rapper guy what's his name which one <laughs> all right yeah. all right what, anyway like, like beats by Dre type or... of shit <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, popular anyways okay Tupac. but a lot of all these a lot of all these uh artists are getting together i think like madonna's in it daft punk's in it and they're all like it's all about i guess their whole thing was it's more about supporting the artist the artist getting more out of it than mm-hmm. the setups that we have now with you know spotify and all that kind of stuff yeah. but it's an extremely high you know bit rate you know, so it's all super good quality. But the problem is, you know, most people are listening to it on their, their MacBooks or something, you know, and you really kind of have to have, you know, a good audio interface or a good stereo or something to get that kind of quality out. It's again what we were talking about with having a good sound system and having, you know, really deep, rich tracks. But if you don't have the sound system that can carry all the frequencies and, you know, give it some weight, you're you're not really getting the quality out of it no matter yeah. what you're playing. It's a huge difference. Yeah. Well, it's kind of <laughs> like it's supposed to be like um, CD quality, right? Which is, I don't remember the bit rate, of like 1400. Wow. Bit right. Rate or something. It, it's supposed to be really nice. But it's, uh, well, I read a nice article the other day of uh, the man who broke the music industry. That was a great article. Uh, yeah, it was a really fantastic article. But part of the reason he was able to break the music <laughs> industry was because they could lower the bit rates and people didn't give a shit. 
they just want the song. Mm -hmm. Right. But most people, if you took it on what they would normally play it on, let's just say their computer and you gave them a CD quality and you gave them an MP3, would you be able to, yeah, would you be able to tell the difference? You wouldn't. You have to have a pretty strong platform. Yeah, the audience doesn't all. care. It, it's the music heads that care. So yeah. who was the guy? Uh, his last name was Glover. I don't remember. Uh, that's the main guy they focused on. But really, it was um, Danny, a series Danny, of Danny mini, Glover. Yeah, <laughs> Danny, Glover. <laughs> Danny, Glover. <laughs> Danny Glover. I'm too old for this shit. I'm getting too old for this shit. <laughs> um, it was really a series. <laughs> it was one. Of, it was known as one of the biggest uh, heist operations ever done. There were so many crews involved um they had people placed in major production <laughs> plants all across the world wow. that were sneaking these cds out and it started in irc channels and what was funny to me reading all of that um some of the years that they're talking about irc channels that were that's where they were uploading all this stuff is like wait that's when i was in middle school <laughs> and i was in irc channels and knew just enough code to see what someone had in their computer and nab what in whatever i wanted uh, and that's how I kind of learned how to start discovering that there's more music out. I grew up with uh, a family where I only I only got to listen to Christian music or oldies. Really? And so that's how I knew in just enough code to get other people's music. And fuck, it was like Glenn Miller or something. But I didn't know about Glenn Miller. I had 50s and 60s music and like weird Christian shit. Well, I hope you enjoyed that 50s and Christies. 50s and 60s. Oh, do all <laughs> Christies. For, right. for, yeah, the 50s and Christies. <laughs> <laughs> Damn those Christies. And it was Jay-Z. That's what I was trying to think of. Oh, what was that? He had the mic stand. Well, he's not that big. <clears throat> I've never heard of him. <laughs> he's small. Right. Yeah, he's yeah. <laughs> Nobody important. He skipped like half the elf of it. I remember one time I <laughs> traded a, yeah. G- a Jay-Z CD for a Ja Rule CD. Yeah, that was, that was a mean, smart move. Yeah, I don't know about that. John Rule. Was he on the Justin Bieber roast? John Rule? I still haven't seen was that. It? I haven't either. Maybe, I want nah, to. Maybe it wasn't him. <laughs> was it Nelly? <laughs> you know what? The, those <laughs> roasts are getting kind of wonky. It's like they're not really roasting just one person. They roast. They just go down the line. Say one yeah. thing about the every well, fucking yeah, person. Yeah. Well, that's what they've done, been doing for a while. <laughs> yeah, and it's still like, been kind of funny. Yeah, yeah it's all right, it but is. it's like repeated <laughs> jokes. Yeah, that's when it starts getting old. But even back when, how what many was jokes that? Can we have about how big Shaq's dick is? You know, right. like it's oh, infinite. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, I still sure. remember what the roast of Dennis Leary, and that was oh, been a while back. It was really <laughs> funny, and the funniest person that came out and spoke you know at the roast was his priest he was hilarious cracking everybody up and just making fun of everybody it was great but yeah now it's just gotten really redundant it's the same stuff i still want to watch the justin bieber one though i do want to see it too. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. i think my favorite joke was uh someone said to shack uh i'm glad you took away some time from throwing barrels at mario to be at this house <laughs> <laughs> like, that's pretty good that was pretty funny i guess they had some paul walker jokes that they took away from the they ri- pulled from the show did they oh yeah. wow i'll have to think of what they were i did read them and they're pretty funny but it, the version i saw online was no, uh, it's not it's nah. edited yeah huh <laughs> Yeah, there's the one that says, what is it? Uh, Irish car bomb plus a uh, shot of fireball equals a Paul Walker. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the picture That's does horrible. it. Yeah. Is it too soon for you, Justin? Or are you still mourning the loss? <laughs> What's am. happening I'm here? I'm a little choked up. Have you seen Tokyo Drift yet? <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay. <laughs> then you're not that sad. <laughs> No, when uh, unfortunately when he died and there was like you know Paul Walker died, I was like shit, that sucks. Who was he? And I actually the IMDb, I'm trying to figure out who he was. I didn't know. I don't know. I yeah. don't watch movies. Yeah. It's just sad somebody dies, but well, yeah, it is. It shouldn't be any more sad if they're celebrity, but that's, right, that's absolutely. The way it's, that's the way it's gone down over the past few years. Yeah, right. And what was this whole thing too um, recently about um, everybody freaking out because Ryan Gosling is has a kid or getting married now or something. Like, I saw how, how dare he. I know. I was like, I guess apparently every girl across the nation or world is like in mourning because of this. 
I hadn't even heard it, and I'm not sad about it. Right? I'm like, <laughs> wow. I saw that he we was too eating much a bowl about of cereal shit. because somebody made a vine about him eating cereal, and that kid yep. died of a disease. And then I heard that Ryan Gosling and then Ryan Gosling eats a fucking bowl of cereal. I'm like, now we're all gonna watch that shit. Man, I, I had hold dinner on, with hold my on, mom hold on, back up. Explain that to me again. Yeah, no, <laughs> you see that? Dumb shit. It's so dumb. <laughs> Some kid that had a. Uh, terminal illness made a vine over Ryan Gosling eating cereal, which I never really got the premise of why he did that or what it was about. But anyway, to pay tribute to this kid, so he, here's Ryan Gosling makes a vine eating a bowl of cereal. So obnoxious. Wow. What the fuck? How do I even know that? I'm surprised <laughs> you do know that. Right. That's, <laughs> <really> <laughs> That's so weird, I know. Because I don't look online at anything or know any current no. bullshit like that. But this bring, it does bring Who me told back. told me that? Uh, to I'm trying to think it was an interview with Tom York and I want to say it was on the OK Computer like VHS they did I think they came out <laughs> DVD later but this is did you see VHS might have been VHS back at that time what the fuck is that that was like <laughs> that's when I said the other day I think it's about yeah, ready to come out so on probably. tape I, was I, mean, say, that, I think I had it in VHS. There may have been some it. laser discs available. Right, time. might have. <laughs> Those are so awesome and huge. <laughs> dude, Why did they have to be so big? They were in my dream the other night. Some dude <laughs> gave me a mixtape on a laser, laser disc? disc in my dream the other night. And, That's that was, awesome. and then it turned out like. I mean, guys, it you knew the mix was tape. awesome, but you had no way to play it. Right. <laughs> yeah, actually, struggle, I had a three disc <laughs> uh, CD a player that seconded out as a laser disc player <laughs> <laughs> in my dream, at least. <laughs> I don't think there's a real thing like that. I don't think so either, uh, but in my dreams, my wow. microwave yeah. plays laser discs. Yeah, right. It yeah, plays there you go. yeah. That would be pretty cool, actually. <laughs> If you put a CD in the micro before, oh, yeah. get the little light show, that's pretty cool. I wonder what a laser disc would do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get one. Let's do it. But no, there was an interview and they were just talking, and I don't know what the question or how it came around uh, about it to it, but he was talking about celebrities in the States. And he was like, it's just, it's the baffle- most baffling thing for, you know, so, somebody that, you know, grew up across the pond. He goes, because you guys definitely put people up like that on pedestals and look up to them and, um, you yeah, know, you, you, you follow them and stuff. And he goes, the thing is where I come from, everybody knows, it, you know, if you're a celebrity, you kind of look down on in a lot of cases. And of course, unless you're the royal family or whatever, he's like, because everybody gets it. Everybody knows that if you are in the spotlight, there's a reason you're there. You you need something. You're, you're forcing your way in there. And it's kind of looked down upon like, oh, look at them. Mm-hmm. You know, they need this, you know, but there's something wrong with them. Yeah. And but us, we don't we don't see that. We see through that and go, oh, these people are cooler than I am. Eating their cereal, right? Yeah, <laughs> crackling oats. <laughs> All right, what kind of cereal was it? I is don't fucking a, know. That's it's, pretty important. Be, be, please be like is. Lucky Charms. No, it <laughs> looks like some kind of. Have you seen the video? No, but I want to know what kind of cereal Pleasure Trap eats. I do too, actually. <laughs> yeah. Fruit, classical Fruit Loops. Nice. Classical yeah. Fruit Loops. Well, they have yeah. marshmallow ones now up here, mm-hmm. you know, which oh, I, I don't. God. I don't buy into, but what? you can't uh, fuck with the original. They're yeah. fine the way they are. Tell that to Hollywood. I actually kind of stopped drinking milk, so my cereal consumption has plummeted. But Fruit Loops would be my go-to. Did you stop drinking milk because of this book, the Pleasure Trap book? That's actually. Pretty wow. accurate, yeah. 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 I can't drink yeah. milk anymore because I've got an allergy to it or something weird. But mm. lactose intolerant? <laughs> you, you might call right? that. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been diagnosed oh, wow. with it. <laughs> so do I've you got this weird it. allergy? I don't Nailed get it. it. <laughs> I haven't been diagnosed with it, but I'm not even sure that's a thing, but it just doesn't always work well for me. So <laughs> Do you eat any I eat my cereal dry. I do eat, uh, drink half and half every day, so uh, technically I'm still drinking a little bit of milk. I was, was going to ask if you yeah. go to like, the almond milk or yeah. anything. No, or... I, um, I <laughs> eat eggs really and good. a little bit of cheese. Like, pizza is one of my... I'll probably never be able to stop eating that. So right. Like, cheese there for sure, and then eggs and half and half, and that's my dairy. And... Yeah. I uh, wasn't like trying to change my lifestyle or health or anything, but I kind of lost a lot of weight and started feeling awesome. So, right, I, I didn't really go back. Did you go to sense. like a vegetarian kind of thing, or you just as more much of a balance? I, as much as I could. Yeah, but um, I still eat chicken and and some fish and stuff. And yeah. I'm not like a person that you have to you know, invite over and you have to worry about what they're going to eat. Right. But if I make my own choices, I'll usually eat pretty pretty plant based stuff. Yeah. So, so way to do Peaceful. it. Yeah. <laughs> there's just there's too many meat things I can't give up, but 
I'm trying to. I'm trying to be. Oh, that didn't sound right. <laughs> like, Fuck you. <laughs> I'm like, catch that more. dude started laughing. Tell us more about that, no, Justin. I mean, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck you <laughs> <laughs> I'll just let it go at this point <laughs> yeah but you know finding that there you know should be more of a balance you should definitely be eating more you know plant based than you are shut up like, <laughs> yeah. more than dick based yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like being the sausages I yeah. crush them <laughs> <laughs> less sausage more plant you know dick based diet yeah, yeah. <laughs> You are growing a garden, aren't you? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Over at Katrina's. We uh, decided this year we're going to do a garden, which I've been awesome. talking about wanting to do one for years. Mm-hmm. But usually, like, I'm so busy and so overwhelmed with, with life that generally I'm like, okay, let's start a garden. Oh, it's August? Shit, yes. I missed yeah. it. So we were actually starting this one. And, it's, of course, we never do anything small, and it's just massive. That's good. We went, went way, way in over our heads. You but can, you way can share little. in. Yeah, that's what we're planning on doing. <clears throat> way over my head. Way a little yeah. over my head. <laughs> yeah, that didn't come out right. You don't do anything small either. <laughs> just checking. We're just following what you're saying. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Which one turns her mic off? <laughs> I'm learning a lot tonight. <laughs> I, I'm feeling, yeah, we need to start doing these again weekly. Right, yeah. This, yeah. This is true. Yeah. But I've heard hemp milk is really good as a substitute. Hemp anything is yeah, absolutely, awesome. Yeah. That's what my sister says. Not hemp, hemp, hemp anything, hemp, but hemp milk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hip she sausage. Says it's the, <laughs> you would know it's not that only you. <laughs> so where are we with um speaking of which? Because what? what no, wow. I'm going yeah. with the yeah. which part. Sorry, okay, yeah. which part? <laughs> so you know which part? <laughs> <laughs> the first part. Uh wasn't there something about uh hemp being able to be tried here for certain like medical purposes? We didn't we get that far? Like hemp oil only? For like um, for Oklahoma, I I saw something oh, yeah. pass recently that changes the legis- I mean changes the legislation on the cannabis oil maybe or something yeah like that. that's what and, it was in extreme cases like kids with seizures and you know stuff like that so okay but uh no hemp products I don't it'd be, it'd be nice if we can all farm hemp again and, yeah. and produce stuff out of it but it's still illegal it's our biggest it's resource on earth mm-hmm. and yeah. we can't touch it makes it. a better version of most everything that we use and. Yep. But it's illegal. Yeah. yeah. You know, just even like um, here and just reiterating what some other people have said that just kind of puts in perspective talking about thinking about a whole forest of trees you cut down for paper and how long it would take to grow those trees back. Yeah. And then you could take the same acreage of, you know, hemp, hemp and, it's a and fraction it of it. grows right back. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just amazing. And then, you know, even hearing about Sad. like the... Uh, you know Henry Ford making the Ford cars. The bumpers were made out of hemp. It was used, mm-hmm. you know, hemp in the in the gasoline. You know, it was hemp gas base or oil base or something like that that it ran on. And sounds right. Yeah, it's just it's amazing. Mm-hmm. <coughs> It'll probably be too yeah. late before we actually make the changes to stop consuming stuff like that. Right. It's pretty uh, sad. I think it will yeah. definitely be too late because uh, it's already too late. Probably. <laughs> it's right. It's in the people with the money that yeah. are making the decisions, right? Well, they're holding it back because it interferes with the, the life that they've built yeah. and the money that they've built. And yeah. I think one of the one thing that the internet's going to continue to change is how transparent things are, and hopefully, with more transparency, things will start to to be the way they should, and less money uh, greed driven, yeah. and, and better for everybody in turn. So, and that's one of the things I really love about the internet. You know, it's because we have built a collective consciousness, yep. you know, the way we're connecting as individuals. And a lot of this technology does isolate us uh, to a lot of degrees. Um, but, you know, the pros and cons, I mean, you do have this collective consciousness. We're more together in some other ways, you know. It's yeah, definitely. kind of interesting. <coughs> It'd be nice to <clears throat> do away with the statehood of the world. You know, just that's definitely going to be the tool that connects us all, is, I think, is the, the Internet. Yeah, absolutely. Or advances us. It's already connected us all. Right. Well, most of us. Yeah. Yeah. There's still, like, there's still places that have I mean, all these laws and boundaries on what can get in and out. True, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah North Korea sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but even that's, you know, had progression. 
you know, even in the past five, 10 years too, I mean, we're seeing something. It's happening at least. Yeah, China's yeah. internet is way different than what we're, we're accessed to. I mean, right. it's uh, a whole different thing. I mean, they heavily constrict what people are able to look up and stuff. Uh-huh. So. And it's all That's wild. people fear information. Mm-hmm. You know, people fear having, you know, huge societies having too much freedom. Right. I mean, you can't control every this massive group of people. Oh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take people coming together to overthrow a lot of these things. Yeah, you get enough people. Oh, you need your people. Yeah, you just need more people. <laughs> you just, get some fucking. Oh, people. is that all we need? We need more people. <laughs> yeah, right. we need less condoms. Yeah, more Bill people. Gates. Yeah. Fuck you, Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> What's your problem, dude? Why are you trying Jesus. to keep our people? <laughs> I don't need your fancy condoms. <laughs> we need more people. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking we were being too serious. We need to throw in a dick joke really quickly. <laughs> wow, you and the sausages. I take it easy. Well, no, I'm just saying. We were being really serious. and then Oh, not serious. <laughs> Justin okay. thought it was pretty serious. He was taking we it seriously, deep. I think. But yeah, I don't maybe. think it was that. Maybe. Well, we're entitled to do that. Yes, absolutely. Baseline is a roller coaster. We can be serious. <laughs> So who was your first guest on here? Jitsu. Jitsu, yeah. Loser. We suckered him Total in. Loser. Yeah. <laughs> he was nervous. We were like, why? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, he wasn't sure, I guess. And we weren't either, really, since it was our first episode of how it would all really go Well, down. we had we three had had rehearsals, yeah. Trial runs, yeah. Had some of our friends come in just so... Were you nervous tonight, Tyler? I was a little bit, yeah. No? Yeah? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I get that. It just... Are you feeling better? Probably, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit more relaxed now. Mm. It takes you a couple beers. <laughs> <laughs> two two full ones, to be exact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is awkward, you know. I mean, we're, we're definitely for... used to the mic and the headphones, too. But, I mean, having that, if we were just having this conversation in the kitchen, it would have been completely different. Yeah. It would but, you know, mm-hmm. having this and, you know, it's just like any other time, like, you know, playing an instrument and something like, okay, I've got something. I hit record and put it down. And then as soon as you hit record, you can lock up, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. yeah. Those fucking red lights. Yup. Trancy every time. Yeah. They just, I mean, I think it might have to do with, we're trained to that red mean stop. If we had green lights for record, we'd probably do a lot better. <laughs> That's an huh? interesting point. Huh? What if you had a yellow light? I don't know. Maybe record. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This might be okay. It might be recording. It might not be. <laughs> He's right. <laughs> Proceed with caution. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> oh man. Well, it takes a minute too to kind of get into the flow of talking, and getting to know each other, and I, mean, I know these two assholes, but. <laughs> Pretty sure anytime I've ever had a conversation with you guys, I was already drunk. So. Right, yeah. And that's the thing, yeah. Same with us. Yeah, yeah I heard that we mm-hmm. met before. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys have also met before. Yes. Yeah, yeah. but... I know we I can met. see somebody two weekends in a row, they're like, who are you again? Yeah. We were singing the Backstreet Boys. That's true. What? Now you remember. Mm-hmm. You want to know the song? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I'm, I do remember that now, yeah. Yeah. Because it got stuck in my head from some bar I was at before I met we him. Saying, last... Oh my god, we're back again. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> That's what we were doing. <laughs> it's really good. And it's just as funny now as it was then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I that's, can't remember. That's a Backstreet Boys song? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make us sing the whole thing to you. <laughs> Do you sing the whole thing like that? <laughs> That's really the only only part that we can uh, apply that right uh, <laughs> yeah. the wording to. I guess. Yeah, how, how would you? I don't know the right word for that. <laughs> I don't either. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Is uh, what that a, is. <laughs> it's the only way we can apply that awesome to it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> seems to work. <laughs> I can't remember where I was. Oh, we were at uh, Lefties on Greenwood. And they were playing like a whole '90s set, uh, huh. just on the. I don't know however they play their music there, but <laughs> on the nineties the, radio station. Say, yeah. <laughs> Pandora. Say the serious nineties station. But anyway, yeah, so that song got stuck in my head. I still haven't been there yet. Yeah, I mean, it's I pretty cool. Either. Yeah. I like it. It's pretty chill. It's supposed to be the official 
bar mm-hmm. of the uh, Roughnecks team too. Oh, kind okay. of ad- adopted them as their their home home bar. I'm just nice. pumped cool. that upstairs they're gonna put in these massive TVs and you can rent Xbox controllers and go up there and play video games. Yeah, oh that's wow! Cool. I didn't know there was an upstairs. There's an upstairs. There is. Huh. You can go up there, but they haven't. I don't think it's finished the, yet. Like I've, I've been up setup, there yeah. uh, before they opened. Uh, one of my friends is a like a building manager there or something. So he took me in one one night. He's like, "Now I convinced him to do this shit." <laughs> That's a great That's idea, smart, though. though. Yeah, yeah. It's fun to do. And they're going to do tournaments, right? Uh, I'm sure Maybe, they'll end up something. doing something like that. Now, if you go home with a controller, you're going to get charged a lot more than what that controller's worth. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Because. Well, why wouldn't you just get charged the same amount and be like, hey, I bought a controller from a bar. <laughs> right, yeah. So they're going to upcharge you a hell of a lot, I'm sure. But when I like that, you, like you said, the uh, home bar for the Roughnecks. Because I could just see like maybe you know pre and post games, just a bunch of you know yeah. soccer hooligans in there. and That'd be fun. I'm still not <laughs> sure how fun. I feel about that team. Like It's kind of reemerged, and I was on board with the Athletics um, getting right? them re-going at yeah. the Driller Stadium. And then I've wait, been going to the Athletics. Then wait a second, we have two... Two teams now. Are there? So there the are officially two teams. They're different yeah. leagues, but but still, but still, I mean, it, small it's going to take away from each of the other one, which unfortunately the Athletics are going to get tossed aside because because Roughnecks the, already have a whole history and yeah. Yeah. plus they're playing in the in the more favorable venue and right in a bigger league. So, but I hope there will still be a, a good following of people. I, I know I'll personally still go to the old right. stadium to watch games. So, are you a big yeah. soccer fan? Um, big no, but yeah, I really enjoy it. Yeah, Did you I, yeah. grow up playing? I played never um, competitively, but like I, I love all sports. Um, I, I especially love soccer, but um, I just liked having something local to to get behind, yeah. and it was it was cool. But kind of fizzled out. Yeah, with, with the Roughnecks. Because I mean, I'm not mm-hmm. big on on baseball, and I'm not you know getting yeah, behind the I guess drillers. I don't, I don't really care about baseball at all. But uh, <laughs> I'm, and I'm just nobody really does. I, I it's like fun baseball. To, it's fuck fun all to, of y'all. It's fun to play, <laughs> but fuck fuck stupid. All y'all. if you like baseball, you suck. <laughs> it's so boring. You have to know. I don't mind it. You but have I'm, to know the sport to enjoy it. It's like the soap well, opera of sports. You know? If I knew you don't NASCAR, what's would happening. I enjoy that? No. Well, uh, actually, I've talked to guys who know about NASCAR, and I don't get it. I'm not a car person. Yeah, I've done the same thing. They'll be like. Okay, so the guy in front right now, he has to make another pit stop because he didn't take a pit stop to get more gas the last time, blah, blah, blah. It's like, sounds I didn't awesome, understand. dude. Right. right. Like, I how didn't understand retarded. there's some strategy. You're still just know? driving like, in a circle like an asshole. <laughs> Every well, sport has a strategy. <laughs> well, well, I get that. Yeah. Ski ball, don't go for the 50, go for the 100. <laughs> I you know that higher. much. Well, but my point was, though, it's like not like I don't like baseball. I like to go out and watch a baseball game every once in a while, you know? And I was just at a drillers Thursday, game. Thursday, yeah, it depends on how cheap the yeah, beer is. Like, <laughs> right. But I'm not going to get yeah. behind the drillers. I'm not like super excited about uh, no, go drillers. I mean, it's like I'm still pissed about the fucking Oilers. I oh. love hockey. I wish we had a goddamn good hockey Why, team. Why are they not yeah. here anymore? No, they just suck. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's just disappointing going to watch a game. It's just. Uh. I, I pretty much refuse to get behind teams, but I like pretty much most sports. I don't get into football, but that's because I never played football. I don't right. like NASCAR because I don't understand. I've like never driven a NASCAR. Right. right? Yeah, it's like... Uh, if we had driven them, we might fucking love it. I don't really like I'm being sure be in awesome. cars. Yeah. Really. Like, well, you really don't. That's I, wanna, I want all the self-automated fucking cars. That's all. I'm, I'm so pumped yeah. for that. Yeah. Because then I can read a book while I'm going to where I'm going. Or when, when whenever we get to, like, we have the glass computer screens, right? That like can do things with the outside world. I want to be in a car where all this the windows are computer screens and zombies are jumping on the car. <laughs> and we got hydraulics, so it feels like they're shaking it. And I got a gun, and I got to shoot the zombies off the car mm. from inside. That's the kind of ride I want to have. I don't and I don't have to drive. Though. I'm gonna get there safe. I'm just looking. That's not a sport. I'm just looking no, forward. No, it's a video game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking forward to that for like in the morning. So I'm not a morning person. I can just get up, get in my car, and then just take you know go back to sleep. Have a like an <laughs> alarm built in. Commute. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you know, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Me, Justin, I could go around work. the blocks a few times. Just set an yeah. off alarm and go wake up and go shit. All right, walk in. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how that changes a couple of industries like the semi. I'm sure they'll start being the semis self-automated. Are, they're already, semis are already on top of it. Yeah, they have a lot more of the the semis in production it's like and testing overdrive or whatever than than the cars do right now. And then also like the ride sharing platforms, they'll probably be self-automated at some point. Yeah, too. Mm-hmm. that'd be really cool. 
But it would just be cool to you know jump in, even if you're going to like Kansas City or Dallas or something Woody. like that. Just get in and be able to hang out with your friends, well, why don't we watch have a better movies, train system? That's so drink dumb. the whole time. There were people <laughs> trying to get behind that right. here too to have one put in, you know, which I don't think is a bad idea. Well, there's one. And it would be expensive, but there's uh, one that's going in between Tulsa and Oklahoma City. Yeah. Yep. That's about to start. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And right now, what they're doing is it's just going to have Tulsa downtown and Oklahoma City downtown That's as a cool. stop, yeah. and then they're going to start like uh, progressing a little bit more after that. But it takes longer <coughs> than the drive. But I'd still rather sit there and not have to I, be driving. Actually, I think it's I would only still like rather not own a car, so I'm right. on board with that. I think yeah. it's I think it's like ten twenty minutes like faster, but not by much. You uh, know, like I said, it's just a little bit faster. But then but, from Oklahoma City, you can get to Dallas on yeah, a train. Right. Yeah. There's already so absolutely. You can do that. that. Yeah. Which I've always wanted wanted to do, Never right? Taking the ride, but and I'm sure getting a, a ticket fun. to go to Oklahoma City would be cheaper than paying the gas. Depends. Pro- well, yeah, yeah. too. Depends on what you're driving. That, well, and it's a fluctuating industry. Yeah, that too. I took a train from uh, Southern California to Northern Oregon one time. It's pretty pretty awesome. Wow, well, I was like eight or nine years pretty. old. Yeah, it was cool. <laughs> I still remember it very clearly. It was you know one of my younger experiences, so it must have been pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, I've never been on a tr- on a train like that too. I, think I liked it. Be really like cool we had an do, overnight yeah. overnight part of it, you know, of course. And I, I was little. It was probably like dirty and stuff, and I didn't just no- I didn't notice. But <laughs> right. yeah. it was fun. And there yeah. was a DJ, and that's when you really got. <laughs> yeah, they were they were DJ playing like a uh, elevator music uh, versus eighties <laughs> pop, and it was sweet. <laughs> Did you hear about? Uh, Sounds like a joke. <laughs> No, they were talking about this <laughs> railroad they were going to put in. It's never going to get done. It was like, Did I don't know, went from New York through Canada, through Alaska, and then over like to like Russia, to and then goes, yeah. And I was like, holy crap. It would take you, what, two weeks to get it from New York to, I think, like Italy or wherever it ended. But like, it would just pretty much went all the way around almost. I was like, that's hmm. fucking nuts. That'd be kind a of fun ride. Kind of do that. The Siberian um, yeah. route from you know Europe to China, basically. That would be really cool. It's not yeah. not out of the question, so I'm still thinking about that. <laughs> right. Man, that yeah. would be really cool. It would be. <coughs> Is that a safe thing to do right now? I don't think so, yes. but don't quote <laughs> me on that. <laughs> yeah. Sounds exciting. I yeah. Know. Oh yeah, if it's not safe, it'll definitely be exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Safer than flying a plane over North Korea or whatever it was. South Korea. South Korea. <laughs> sorry. Flying. Wait, I, no, no, I'm, that's Mal- Malaysian. Obama. No, that's Malaysian, right? Excuse me. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh. Who wants to get into a foosball tournament tonight? Not I. I'm terrible at that game. Totally taking that back because I meant ski ball. <laughs> oh, I'm awesome at that game. <laughs> I was going to say, ski I thought ball. we had already discussed ski that ball. after this, we're no. playing ski ball. <laughs> and I still haven't got hit back up from the, oh, he's fucking twitching, whatever that is. All right, can, do you know what, the, can you explain <laughs> I, this? Because you mentioned this before the podcast. No, I can't explain it because what twitching I don't is? know what it is. Do you know what twitching is, Tyler? Mm-hmm. It's twitch.com. Uh, Twitch.com. I don't know what it is. Well, pull up a Google oh my God, search okay. bar. And let's look at I'm sitting in front of a computer. Go- Google yeah. it. Side Google it. Siri. Talk what is Twitch? Itself. What is Twitch? Have you guys Twitch. seen that? Seen the movie? Uh, what we do in the shadows? <coughs> no. Uh-uh. It's excellent. It's, is it? Uh, one of the guys oh, from Flight of the Concords and the guy who wrote Flight of the Concords and a couple other movies, and it's kind of like a vampire satire um, documentary film. It's really funny. That's cool. I'll check it, it seems out. to be right people now. playing video games live. All right. Twitch. Twitch. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think yeah. that's all it is, is you're watching people play video games. I guess my buddy has like 500 followers, and he's talking about doing... He must be fucking awesome at whatever he's playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he probably I mean, is. Uh, he said really he just strange. wanted to do like a fundraiser on it, to get a bunch of people to watch him to do whatever twitching is, and... Uh, give the money to some charity here in town, but he just hasn't figured out what charity he wants. That's yet. really cool. So he told me he wasn't able to play skee ball because he had to twitch today. Had an old skee ball accident nine, <laughs> until nine or ten. We don't talk about the skee ball accident. And then after nine or ten, he would be free for skee ball. Okay. I'm I'm not sure I like that. <laughs> Any of that. 
He's, he was also a, he has gone to the world championships for beer pong. <laughs> um, his resume is impressive. Uh, it's very impressive. Yeah. He, Can I follow him on the Twitter? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but on Twitch. On the Twitter. Yeah. On, on the on, Twitch or the Twitch. Yeah. Dot com. I think you could Twitcher. Twitcher. Yeah. <laughs> Twitcher dot com. Twitch it up. I'm gonna pass on that. <laughs> Not because I don't okay. think he's awesome, but. I don't need I, another app. Speaking of games, though, um, I have found a pool table. I'm just logistically thinking if I want to just try to stick that in the living room. Do it, and we'll do the podcast around it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've always wanted a pool table, though, and I'm yeah. just like, I think, because we don't use the living room for anything. I'm always in here. My roommate's always in his room, so we're just like, well, let's just set that up as more like a little bar area. Be cool. Take one of the corners and just put like a little bar and then just take out you know, move the couches away and just, I mean, we already have a foosball table out there. I might as well have a pool table too. We've got darts out there. But you have to sync the ball in rhythm to the beat of the music. There you Ooh, go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Twitch that, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> well. Just make sure you don't have it where you're like uh, yeah, playing like that. this. Yeah, up against, against the, the wall. wall. Oh, yeah. yeah. You've got to measure that out first. That's a good point. Mm. Nothing worse. Just knock out no. a few walls and... I hate playing like that. I was doing Everybody that over does. some it's the girl's worst. head the other day. I was like, I don't <laughs> want to ask you to move, but I... Get the yeah. fuck out but of my pool. you kind of do know stick. that there's a pool table yeah. right here. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. And there's a whole other side <laughs> to that table that she could have been sitting on. <laughs> and we're the only ones playing. Like, yeah. That's when you just say, get the fuck out of my way. Do you not I was see, in a bike trying... bar in the middle of well, nowhere. Maybe, oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Right. talk to a bunch of people that night. Excuse me, Marge. Can you scoot back you get that wearing pink shoes nonetheless that is like this, yeah that's a wait, rough wait we're spot. going to a what kind of bar <laughs> at what place and like uh, i'm wearing pink shoes and then our friends are like no 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 i am puerto rican they don't fuck with me they don't <laughs> fuck with you <laughs> like okay yeah they do no no one did it was all right we survived well you're uh, here to tell us about it well it was a 30 hour drink session uh oh, where we didn't sleep i remember <laughs> Yeah, I wasn't there. Uh, but I remember. Go. But I remember. Right. Yeah. But I remember because I wasn't there doing that, and I stopped by to <laughs> say hi. And I was like, uh, wow. stop by the next day. I'm like, why is this still happening? <laughs> yeah, it never ended. Not look good. Won some money at the casino the next day, and then went back out the next night. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know how I survived. I don't either. Uh, you're still so kind of young. That's what but I always that's, tell him. I'm like, that's the thing. But that's I was he's doing it with a 45 year old, and he the, survived after the bar or yeah. like at the bar. It's, <laughs> yeah, it started. <laughs> Where were you doing it with? Him? <laughs> good one. I mean, was That'd it up on the pool table for all the bikers to were see? Were you playing with or, his cue or I know, was just, that? I well, with did you bring your own? <laughs> it was with. He's like, got a carrying case. <laughs> We were together for maybe 22 hours, and then I continued on my own wow. You had to pick a lot of Gatorade that's quite, with that. Yeah, that's quite the session. You needed electrolytes and a banana oh, to man. survive. Oh, my God. <laughs> this derailed so bad. I had plenty of banana. Right? <laughs> oh my God. Let's bring this back to you for a moment, please. All right, besides uh, you know, music and uh, traveling... What else do you like to do? I play a lot of basketball. I do love you? basketball, yeah. I've been thinking well, about playing basketball yeah. a lot lately. Really? I haven't been playing Playoff a lot season. of basketball. It's in your, it's in your mind, yeah. I yeah. like basketball. <laughs> I, um, I would be interested in, interested in actually coaching basketball. Like It's one of my few passions. Really? So other than, seriously, music and basketball take up about 80% of my time. Well, That's I mean, you walked yeah. in with a Thunder hat on. That's true. I'm, yeah. Right. We should have uh, picked up on that. Have you always played? We didn't get the cue. Yeah, since I was pretty little. Yeah? Yeah. I try to play as much as possible, but I also have a kind of half-broken ankle that I actually broke a few years back, and it gives me problems, so yeah. I, I play as much as I can, actually. Once you fuck something up, it didn't always... It's, it's never the same. Getting yeah. old sucks, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, <Please>. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that's interesting. Where do you play? Just Usually at the Y or yeah. uh, wherever I know pickup games are going on. So. Yeah, cool. But yeah, I play a few times a week if if possible. All right, before we have the thunder, who are you behind? 
Hmm. <laughs> After all these other I know. Like, sure. Yeah, I was, uh, I was actually a, a big Suns fan because Steve Nash was my favorite player. <laughs> well, probably right since on. Jordan. Like those, I kind of migrated away from the Bulls, right. of course, being a young kid and right. being obsessed with him and the, and the Bulls. And, um, but yeah, I like Steve Nash. He's, he's a cool dude. I saw a good photo of... Uh, I, I always liked Muggsy Bogues as a yeah. kid because I was so short. <laughs> and I saw a good photo of Jordan with Muggsy Bogues the other day. It's it's like Muggsy Bogues is all crouched down trying to guard Jordan. Jordan's just holding the ball up above his head. And I love Muggsy guys like that. comes up like to his waist. <laughs> <laughs> like that's it. That's, I like Nate Robinson. You know what I'm talking about? He used to play, I don't for, know, he used to play for the Thunder actually, but... Hmm. He's 5'8", but he probably weighs 200 pounds. I mean, he's like a stout little dude, but... That's he's, pretty stout. He's always... Uh, I think he's won, like, three dunk competitions now. And, Damn. Uh, always fun to watch. Like, he's one of my favorite ups. players. Yeah. What's yeah. his vertical? It's got to be 45 inches, probably. Yeah, that's crazy. Jeez. I can't imagine jumping that high. I can't either. Uh-uh. I was climbing a tree a week or two ago. <laughs> And I remember getting up. He jumped like, out of it to feel what it felt like. <laughs> I mean, it was like a very unclimbable tree. Um, and I made it up. I still hadn't made it to like a stopping point uh, where I could rest. But I realized, fuck, dude, I'm like 15 or 18 feet up. If I make it into that branch, that's another two feet. I don't want to jump from that high. Like, I can't imagine being able to naturally... Think about how many times they just do that over and over too. I mean, like yeah. he's, he's coming down that hard on his on his ankles oh, and yeah. knees. Knees, yeah. You can't for, have a long for twenty life. straight years yeah, every geez. single day. Yeah, that's fucking wild. I would not. I don't think I'd last. Well, I'm sure. I mean, it's definitely one of those things that you you do when you're a lot younger to you know, kind of mid range because I'm sure later in life, like that, your yeah, nose, are, your knees, or ankles are done. Yeah. I mean, I just still, like, my knees are blown out from just carrying gear for <laughs> as long as I had, you know. Yeah, you don't have to do too much soon, though. Uh-uh. Mess them up. <clears throat> you know, it's always those things people always tell me, you know, oh, you're going to feel it when you get old. And in my, you know, 20s, I was thinking, oh, yeah, when I'm like 50, 60, I can deal with that. Mm-hmm. They didn't tell me, like, 30s. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you hit that 30 mark, you start feeling everything, and you're just like, fuck, shit, all this I'm over here knocking on wood. Right, yeah, I know. Your time is coming, buddy. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I'm just a... Well, I'm about a little over three years to 40. I'm not looking forward to what Fuck I'm going to feel at 40. I'll let you know in a couple of months. All right, I was going to say. <laughs> that's yeah. why I'm looking at you. <laughs> Quit looking at me, asshole. I would say, well, you know. I don't wake up in pain ever. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> she, no, she but, just wakes up in bed. <laughs> No, it's the you know the two three shots of vodka in the morning probably helped though, doesn't it? Oh, it kills anything. <laughs> you're feeling. Yeah, you won't. You don't need anything else. Oh, and I would say one uh, ibuprofen with that. Yeah, what? One ibuprofen. Yeah. Three shots of vodka. Oh, okay. Good. <laughs> I think yeah. you got serious there for a minute. Go like, no, a, ibuprofen. A three to one ratio of right. Yeah. Vodka to ibuprofen. Yeah. And if the first one doesn't work, you know, do another three shots and. Yeah, yeah. six shots, two ibuprofen. There you go. <laughs> It works out. It really does. <laughs> yeah. So what uh, mix did you bring? I actually sent? woke up and made one today. Did you really? Oh, so really cool. we got something new. Yeah. I <laughs> awesome. couldn't stand to use something old. Um, just, just the way I am. I don't know. I didn't have anything relatively new. Actually, when I turned my controller on, it like, took 30 minutes for it to like really fire up full steam i was like oh god this is going to be it's not going to work because it's sometimes before i've I turn it on and it something's not up to date and it doesn't work right and those things are full of problems like i wish i didn't yeah. depend on one but i do but yeah i made it today um very um minimal and dark and cool yeah. it sounds slow right up my alley yeah yeah hopefully it'll be different than anything else that somebody's brought with them so yeah Sounding that has like been a really yeah. cool thing about the the guests that we've had. I think everybody's done something so different. You I know? threw a few on, and yeah, just kind of checking them out. And everybody seemed so unique, which is cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, which is funny because we thought um, people would listen more to the mixes than the actual podcast. Weren't Before we, we started, that's yeah, what we thought. We thought that would be more of a draw mm-hmm. than actually listen to the interviews. Something but, you could just put on and listen yeah. while you're doing stuff. But no, hardly anybody is listening to the mixes, unfortunately. So we got to figure out a new way to promote those. Get people listening to them. Yeah, well, I think they've listened to the interviews more than the mixes. Well, no, I'm just saying that but, that's a think tank for yeah, we should sure, find a way to, to get that sure. out there more. Right, because you know? I think... And especially with the, the podcast, these actual conversations are on mm-hmm. iTunes, so that's getting a lot of it, too. And we can't put mixes on iTunes. Yeah. yeah. You know, so... So do you have any ideas? <laughs> <laughs> so now we're... In general? Just, yeah. yeah. Yes, what are your thoughts on anything? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you do them on, on YouTube and iTunes? Yeah, we do We do the two videos on um, YouTube. So you have the conversation, then you have the mix. Uh, and then, of course, iTunes is just, you know, the conversation. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, like we said, like uh, we thought people would be more into the mixes. Maybe they listen to the conversations, but it's the way opposite way. Really? So it's just like trying to get people. It's kind of cool, too, though. That, well, no, I, I definitely you know. appreciate that. Don't get me wrong. Right. But I still I want too. people to, but to hear the music. Hear the music. Yeah, right. since it's right. a, you know, kind of a local showcase, so you definitely want to um, yeah, have absolutely. more exposure to what's going on around town yeah. as far as musical taste. So. And get from more familiar with the artist. And, you know, like we always say, you know, actually go out and find that artist and go yeah. listen to them where they're playing rather than going to your favorite spot and hoping the music doesn't suck. Or in my case, uh, request me to go out and play somewhere. Yeah, there you go. So, Absolutely. Hey, what, what's the deal here? Yeah. Don't yeah. worry, we're going to. No. <laughs> it's going um, to happen. Yeah. Is, that, yeah. is that all it takes? We just have to be like, hey, no, you played this? No. It's not 100% all, but... But well, it's, close it's to definitely it. most of it. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If the setup cool. is good, yeah, the venue, sure. the people you'd be playing with, that the... With the environment that they're building for the show. Definitely so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to ask me to play like an electric circus, right. I'd be like, um, I'm not going to be around. Right. <laughs> Whenever that is. Or we're going like, to put you up with some. We're going to put you with some drum anyways. and bass guys. You'd probably go, not my speed. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. We're not going to put you with that anyway. <laughs> no, it's going to be trap. Good. To go with your name. And uh... <laughs> that way, nobody will be confused. <laughs> Right, right. Actually, and I'll break the news. I'm still waiting to for a date. I guess it's it's going to be starting next month. Um, but I've been on the Yeti for this oh, yeah. all last year, and there was some logistic problems. And finally, they said, you're an asshole. I'm tired of listening to you. We'll just give it to you. You're persistent. Yes. Mm-hmm. But we're going to do kind of an after brunch show. It's going to be a monthly. Uh, so it'll be outside. Um, and they don't generally open until... F- well, they didn't open on Sunday till 7. Now mm-hmm. they're going to open up to, uh, 4 for us on that day. That's awesome. So doing like 4 to like 8 or 9, being outside, full Bloody Mary bar, mm-hmm. but it just being house, deep house, minimal, that kind of stuff. Sounds really cool. So When I was living in Kansas City, <coughs> one of the best uh, events they had was a, a monthly deal called Sunday Solace. And it was at a cool outdoor patio place and um, you know showcasing something different every week. And yeah. just a cool environment. Um you know, change your pace from from going out on a weekend night to yeah. still having fun on a on a Sunday. You can hang out, hang out in a different fashion. Right? Yeah, just and listen to good music. It's early mm-hmm. enough to where you can still have a few drinks, go home, and still have enough time to sleep it off for work the next day, or you know, mm-hmm. something to do during the day, do something after brunch, and yeah. you know. So, I still don't have a name for it, but um, hmm. yeah, we're also needing. <laughs> Do I? What? A name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? I think he said, do we also need? And then he gave me a said, we're like, also needing. Oh, yeah. And then <laughs> she <A name>. stops. <laughs> but we've done a lot of uh, thoughts on like the big Bloody Mary bar and stuff like that and trying to just do That'd be cool. unique and whatnot. So it'd be fun. Yeah. I definitely want to do a soul therapy version. That'd we're, be good. Where we get mm-hmm. Shannon and Josie up there. What about food uh, on Sundays? Do they do a food truck or ever? Um, I think we could probably get one or two of them. We can talk to Joel. It wouldn't be new. Yeah. Yeah. But even still, Joel has a new food truck. Um, What's the name of that? Have you guys seen that Smoking Bowls truck yet? No. Is it out yet? I don't know. Oh, that sounds awesome. It's like a... (laughs) (laughs) I'm there. I haven't seen it yet. I don't remember the guy's name, but one of the food truck guys was telling me about it. He has... uh, this one coming out. I don't know if it's out yet, but it's like an Asian fusion truck called Smoking Bulls. Oh, that's, that's good. Great. <laughs> that's really good. What was the story yeah. behind? Uh, you know, uh, the, the the one thing. The thing that 
The one thing. Oh, yeah. That story behind it. I have no Come idea. Come on. What was it? The fuck ups. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, uh, <laughs> so some friends of mine were saying that they wanted to make a food truck where they serve pho in cups <laughs> so you can buy a fuck up. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> Not as good as the date crepes, but... The date crepes? Date crepes. Is date crepes. Yeah, date Our crepes. friend, comedian Andrew Deacon, has a joke about wanting to do a food truck, and I hope you didn't hate me for doing this Comprehend bit on here because I'm going to totally <laughs> get over well it. I'm going to totally plow through it's not going to even be funny yeah, but yeah, it's gonna suck. Uh, having you know getting a food truck <laughs> and, do it right. and really um, you know providing for the people that you know pick up a girl take her home want to cook them you know like um, you know breakfast the next morning but they don't have anything mm-hmm. having a food truck that caters to that and calling it date grapes mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's good pretty funny yeah when he tells it yeah. <laughs> yeah when he tells it it's great we, yeah i just blew it <laughs> all right now that your bad joke's over <laughs> okay. no it's a yeah. good joke told poorly. bad delivery <laughs> yes yeah yeah okay yeah your bad delivery yeah. now your bad delivery is over <laughs> what? um no nothing important well now you built it up it better be yeah better so not be stupid nothing as fuck. really important i just wanted to thank you for coming out tonight thank you Tyler. Man. thanks for having me uh, yeah, yeah no it was important. pleasure <laughs> yeah. Pleasure trap. Um, oh. Oh. Hey, oh. <laughs> I was slow on that one. Sorry. <laughs> that hit my reward system. <laughs> um. <laughs> so no shows coming up, but you've made a mix for us for I today. I'm, li- today. Yeah. I'm excited to hear that. I kind of yeah. want to go play Wii Golf and listen to it right now. We should probably do <laughs> I'm that. I'm totally done with that. Weed Golf. We. We Golf. Uh, tell me, tell me more. Golf. Weed yeah. Golf. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but yeah, once we get this uh, other monthly roll in, um, we'll definitely call you up and see if you're interested in doing that. It'd be awesome. great to have you. Yeah, I would love to. So, all right. Thanks again. Well, yeah.